These are practice exercises from page 306 and 307 in the textbook. We're going to practice drawing Lewis structures. It may be helpful to have a periodic table with you because when we draw Lewis structures, we figure out the number of valence electrons based on the group number that the atom is in. So in order to figure out valence electrons, you need to know the group number in the periodic table. So let's look at the compound. We've got CH2Cl. Well, if we look at where carbon is in the periodic table, carbon is in group 4A, which means that carbon is bringing four valence electrons. So carbon is giving us four valence electrons. Hydrogen is in group 1A, which means that hydrogen is bringing one valence electron, but there are two of them. And chlorine is in group 7A, so it's bringing seven valence electrons, but again, there are two of them. So we're going to add together four electrons plus two total from the hydrogen plus 14 total from the chlorine. It's going to give us a grand total of 20 valence electrons that we can use when we make this Lewis structure. So 20 valence electrons. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and draw the Lewis structure. Typically when they give you the compounds, the first atom that they give you is the central atom. So we're going to start by putting carbon in the middle. And then the general procedure for drawing your Lewis structure is to connect all of your other atoms with single bonds. So we know that there are two hydrogen atoms that we need to attach and two chlorines that we need to attach as well. Now every time we draw one of these lines, we are drawing a bond between the two atoms and that uses two electrons. So we've used a total of two, four, six, eight already. So we started with 20, we used eight to make the bonds So that means that we've got 12 left. Now we start putting those 12 electrons around the outside. So if I look at my hydrogen atoms, I need to think about if my hydrogen has its octet filled. It's kind of a trick question because hydrogen doesn't have an octet. Hydrogen is okay with only having two electrons, and hydrogen feels like it has two electrons because it's sharing these two electrons from the bond. So this hydrogen atom is fine, it doesn't need any electrons around it. Same thing for this hydrogen. It feels like it's got two electrons around it because of the bond with carbon, so it doesn't need any more. Now the chlorines are a little different. Chlorine does want to feel like it's got eight electrons around it, and since it's only feeling two from this single bond, we need to put some more electrons around chlorine. So in order for the chlorine to really feel like it's got eight, we need to put six electrons around it. And notice that I'm putting them in groups of two because we have non-bonding pairs of electrons. So we've used two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 electrons so far. So I know that I've got six more that I can put on. So again, I'm up to 14. Here's electron 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And we can see that we've made this chlorine atom happy because it feels like it's got eight electrons around it. Six of them are non-bonding and two of them are bonding. So I've used all 20 electrons and I've got everything here with a complete octet, including the carbon in the center, because it also feels like it's got two, four, six, eight electrons around it because of the electrons it's sharing. So this is the complete Lewis structure. And when you draw your Lewis structure, it doesn't matter if your two chlorine atoms are next to each other or across from each other. It just matters that they're both attached to the carbon atom. So that's how we do Lewis structures, and that's the general pattern you should follow. So let's take a look at our next set of Lewis structures. These are a little different because the one we have here is an ion. So when I go to count the electrons, I need to consider the ionic charge. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I know that I've got a nitrogen atom, which brings five valence electrons. I know I've got an oxygen atom, which brings six valence electrons. And I'm going to know this based on the group that they're in in the periodic table. So nitrogen's in group 5A, oxygen's in group 6A. And that positive charge means that I have lost an electron because that's how positive charges form. So I'm actually going to have to subtract one electron when I do this math. So 5 plus 6 should have been 11, but since I have to subtract one, I'm only going to get 10 electrons to do my structure with. So again, I'm going to start by attaching my atoms to each other. That cost me two electrons. So the next thing I want to do is use up my other eight, starting by filling everyone's octet. So I've used two. Now I've used four, six, 
8, and I've used 10. I cannot put any more electrons in this structure, so let's check to see if everyone's octet is filled. Well, oxygen has two, four, six, feels like it has eight electrons around it, so oxygen's happy. But if we look at nitrogen, nitrogen only has two non-bonding and two more here, so nitrogen only feels like it's got four electrons around it. So what we need to do is we need to make oxygen share some of its electrons. Specifically, we're gonna take two of these non-bonding pairs and say oxygen, you can't keep them for yourself, you need to share them with nitrogen, and we're gonna redraw them as bonds. And the reason we knew we had to do this to two pairs is because nitrogen only feels like it's got four electrons, it needs to feel like it's got a total of eight, so we needed four more electrons to be shared. So when we redraw this, we're going to draw nitrogen as having its one pair, but sharing three pairs with oxygen, which now only has one pair to itself. We should still double check and see that we've got two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. So we've done that correctly. And the last thing we want to do is we want to put this in brackets with the charge on the outside to explain why it's missing one electron. Because normally nitrogen and oxygen would have 11 electrons, but since it's got a positive charge, we've only got 10. Okay, let's look at the next one. We've got carbon and hydrogen. So we know that carbon brings four valence electrons, but we've got two carbon atoms. And then each hydrogen brings one, but we've got four of those. So that's going to give us a total of 12 electrons to work with. This one's going to look a little bit differently. I can't have all of those around the central carbon atom. So the way this is going to be set up is those two carbon atoms are going to be connected to each other. I can't really use hydrogen as a link because hydrogen only ever makes one bond. So it's going to have to be the carbon atoms that are attached to each other. So because the carbon atoms are attached to each other, I can fill in the other hydrogen atoms like this. So if I look, I've already used two, four, six, eight, ten electrons in order to make my skeleton, which means I only have two more electrons to put on. I know that none of the hydrogens needs additional electrons because hydrogen's fine having two around it, but if I look at my carbons, each carbon only feels like it's got two, four, six, same thing here, two, four, six, so I need that last pair of electrons to be shared between the two carbon atoms so that they each feel like they have two, four, six, eight, and two, four, six, eight. So that is the correct Lewis structure for C2H4. And if you didn't get it on the first time, that's fine. First few times you do Lewis structures, you're gonna do a lot of trial and error until you start to see the pattern, and then you'll get faster at doing the correct Lewis structures. But just try as many as you can until you get very comfortable. All right, let's go ahead and look at our last set. So we're going to start these the exact same way we always do, by thinking about how many valence electrons we have. So in this first one, I've got chlorine, which brings seven valence electrons. And I've got two oxygen atoms, which each bring six. That negative charge means that we have gained one. So I'm going to add an additional electron in there, which means I've got a total of 20 electrons to work with. I'm going to start this the same way I always do, assuming that the first element that they give me is the center, so I'm going to put chlorine in the middle. I'm going to attach it to the two oxygen atoms. I can see that I've used two, four electrons, so now I'm going to complete the octets on the outside. So these are electrons 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I still have more electrons to place, so now I'm going to put them on the center. So here are electrons 17, 18, 19, and 20. So I've placed all of the electrons I have to work with. It's time to see if anyone's octet is filled or if I need to make any double or triple bonds. So I'm going to start with the oxygen on the right hand side. This oxygen has two, four, six non-bonding electrons. It also feels like it's got the two in the bond, so this oxygen feels like it has eight. It's happy. Let's look at the chlorine. Chlorine has two, four non-bonding electrons feels like it's got four bonding electrons, so chlorine also feels like it has eight, so that's fine for chlorine. And then the oxygen on the left-hand side should also be good because it's exactly the same as the oxygen on the right. Again, two, four, six, eight. So this is a good Lewis structure. Everyone's octet is filled. The only thing I need to do is again, put it in brackets with that charge on the outside so we understand why there's an extra electron in the structure. All right, last one. 
we get five electrons from the phosphorus, we've got four oxygens, each giving six electrons, and that three negative charge means that we've gained three electrons overall. So we're going to have a whole other three electrons to work with when we do this structure. So that's going to give us a total of 32 electrons to work with. And the thing that's very important about these extra electrons is that it doesn't tell us who they belong to. They don't necessarily belong to oxygen. They're just part of this compound. They are something I can use when I make the Lewis structure. So again, this first atom is going to be my center atom. I'm going to start by putting the phosphorus in the middle, attaching my four oxygen atoms. Now I've already used two, four, six, eight electrons to do that. I'm going to fill around the outside. So I had used eight. Here's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So I've used up all the electrons I have. I can't put any more in. Let's go ahead and check the octets. So every single oxygen on the outside looks identical. They have six non-bonding electrons and two bonding. So every single oxygen feels like it's got eight electrons, which is good. If I look at the phosphorus in the center, that also feels like it's got eight because it's got two, four, six, eight bonding electrons that it's sharing. So this is a good structure. Everyone's got their octet filled. The last thing I need to do is put it in brackets with that charge on the outside to explain why there are three extra electrons. So these are the general steps you should take when you do Lewis structures. First, you wanna figure out how many valence electrons you have to work with. Then you wanna start by building a skeleton full of single bonds. Then you wanna fill in all of your electrons on the outside. Never put in more electrons than you have. And if you get to the point where you've put in as many electrons as you can, but not all of your elements have their octets filled, then you do what we did here and you add double or triple bonds because it's the same electrons, you're just making them from being non-bonding electrons to making them shared bonding electrons. So that's your general strategy for drawing Lewis structures. The best thing you can do with this is just practice over and over and over again until you get very comfortable. So try as many practice problems as you can find in the textbook, double check your answers, make sure you can do these because we're still gonna be drawing them in chapter nine.